All right. Um, sorry for that mix up. Um, Alright, sorry for that audio mix up. And you're welcome back. China actually is still uh, our guest, our special guest today. And we are reviewing his book, A Thousand Times on the Same Road. It was written last year, 2020. I think this must be the first time I read a book on Nigerian football. Very, very detailed. And um, we're still, let's look at chapter one here. You, you started out with um, Kill Us All in Kano. We are just reading your book here. Uh, he said it was like a warehouse with, mis with missiles flying in all directions. Heavily armed anti-riot policemen. Um, what happened here? Dolphins and what happened here? Yes. What I thought you would do is this. Uh, if people have written books, mm -hmm. Kule Solange has written a book on the Super Eagles. Yes. But basically statistics. Yeah. You know, team sheets, mm -hmm. best scorers. Mm -hmm. Imagine Mega has done a book on the league. Mm -hmm. His was also statistics. Mm -hmm. fact, results of games, mm -hmm. goal scorers, but... For me, I try to tell stories around the league, mm. right? I want, I want people to look at Nigerian league beyond what they see on the pitch, mm. beyond Sharks beat Aimba 2-1 mm. or Calabar. General result. Yes, yeah, so I wanted them to see something that happened behind the scenes. So I was like telling stories around the league. Mm. I, I tried to add humor to my storytelling. Mm. So what happened in Kano was this. That was the time that Kano players did not lose at home. Yes. You know, and the others were leading the, in that game. And the referee was supposed to add about 11 extra minutes to the game. Even yes. the Kano players had equalized 1-1, one, one, mm. they needed the winning goal. Mm. When the game ended 1-1 one, one eventually, the fans, you know, jumped in and tried to, you know, physically assault people right there. And we had to run for our lives. Mm. Because the police at some point told us, we can't save you, run. Mm. And we started running. Mm. Uh, and then, um, I'm, I'm going to read something here. Um, your spot with Christopher Green. Uh, the current DG of Real Madrid. It's documented here, China. It is, yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate because people who buy this book will also... What's your spot with Green? I don't know. Please buy the book. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's documented. Yeah. And um, so, and, and this, this, this manuscript was written maybe three, four years ago. But mm. my history with him said in 2011. Yeah. So, um, it's not... It's not secret yes. that what is going on between me and him. Mm. So we're going to read the book. Yes. But he basically told me some key words. Yes. It was a threat to life. Yes. Yeah. So um, you you wrote about the late Henry Calio. Incidentally, he happened to be one of our friends. He was working with us here also on RS TV before he died in that car accident. Um, you talked about this one issue here, and uh, well, not really this one problem here, but this was your relationship with Henry Calio. Um, I think he was driving here. What happened here? Uh, what, what, what page or chapter was that? Uh, this is uh, so many, so many things. There, 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 there are bits and pieces of information mm. here, and I try to touch as much as possible. Mm. Now, there is no way you can put a thousand stories. I, I wish you could have gotten some pictures. Yes, um, then there would have been too many pages. Mm. This book already has close to three hundred pages. Mm. I actually have planned to to have pictures in it. Yeah. There, are, there, are, there may have been too many pages. So I mm. said, okay, just leave it at od ordinary text. It would have been difficult to have a thousand stories in one book. Mm. So I tried you know, because when you're writing about, so for example, you're writing about Henry Calio, people want to see him and I know, I get, know. Uh, get the feeling. But it's a fine book. The quality is very good. Um, fantastic book by um, China Cherry, one of our own, one of Portacot's finest, um, about the Nigerian footballer. What's your thoughts on the MPFL, um, the new digital MPFL? Now we can get to watch football in Nigeria on your on your mobile device and this new balls about uh, the rest strike rest strike deal with the, with the NFF. Yeah because of the disappointments before we, we had our doubts. Mm. I mean we heard about we had Super Sport, they came in the left, we heard about Next TV mm. and then there was much about Next TV. Mm. We heard about Red Strike and we thought maybe it's one of those things but it's the league stayed last weekend. We had mm. three games on TV. Yeah. Abia Warriors versus Imba Aqua United versus Dakada mm. and Reverse United versus Rangers. Yeah. And we have we have two games on TV this weekend. So mm. and we could stream yeah. on our on our handheld devices. Yeah. And I heard the NFL president say he's projecting that the league can make as much as eighteen billion naira a year. 
Possible, yes. Yeah, it is yeah, possible. So I think it can only be good for Nigeria. The challenge we have about streaming is that because of our network providers, streaming cannot be seamless. Mm. And the cost of data is not cheap. Yeah. You know, so these are, these are issues you might have. But so what, what will the terrestrial TV like us come to play? Uh, for example, yesterday's match, I think we did one, but it wasn't live. We did, we did the Rivers United match. It wasn't live, but we were able to get it online. So where, because now it looks like the NFF is basically focusing on just streaming, digital TV. Yeah, outside the NTA deal. They are, not, they are not focusing on just streaming. Red Strike actually paid to, to acquire the rights. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Red Strike did have to do with streaming. And they paid to acquire the rights. And of course, football like sports is business. Now, you want to acquire the rights to show something, you buy it. So I, I don't know the deal they have with NTA, because the NTA came up, came, came up as a shock. Yeah, very nice. We knew about the Red Strike thing. Yeah. And we know that money was paid to the league management company by Red Strike to acquire the, 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 the rights to stream the league. But suddenly we saw games on NTA. Mm. We had to be told what that deal is. But I'm thinking that you want to show, you want to have a piece of the action, mm -hmm. you pay for the rights. Fantastic. Excellent. Good football uh, on the MPFL. Um, uh, we stay. We stay. We stay China so we stay with us in the house. Um, let's look at another uh, trending story on on Twitter. Yeah, it has to do with Victor Simon testing positive to the COVID nineteen yesterday. Um, are you surprised with this? Because uh, you know his man has been having so many issues. First, he was he had an arm issue, but now he's tested positive to COVID nineteen. I'm not surprised. I I was chatting with a, a few friends last mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. and I said footballers. Are the most vulnerable, not vulnerable, unintelligent people. <laughs> yeah, because there's a virus out there. There are restrictions. There are rules to play. Mm. We saw the English team mm. travel for a game, and players were able to sneak in girls at night, mm. disregarding COVID-19 rules. Mm. Now, what we heard was Osimen was in Nigeria or in, or in Lagos, mm. and he attended the party. Mm. His birthday party. Yes. And I saw a video of that. Mm -hmm. He was dancing with random people, mm -hmm. so we are spraying money on him. Then he goes back and tests positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Can't be that silly. Mm -hmm. And that's what footballers do. So I'm, I, I can't say I'm surprised mm -hmm. because footballers are like that. But it's just too bad because this is the second time he's testing positive for mm -hmm. COVID-19. And, and then the second story, I said Victor Simeo will be fined. Uh, he will be fined. That's the second story. Um, we, we don't know what, what, what kind of fine will be coming out, but he'll be fine. That's coming out from um, a, a, a publication in Napoli. He said he'll be fine for not respecting uh, the club's regulations. He should be fined heavily. Mm. If I'm the Napoli manager, mm. he should be fined a month's wages. Mm. Because he's, he's, he's going to endanger the whole squad. It costs a lot of money for Napoli. Yes, so I think you should be fine heavy. Probably mm. a full month's wages. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, okay, we'd like to hear your thoughts on any of China Cho's um, uh, uh, talks. Um, he's been making so much comments, especially on his book. And But before then, let's take a time out on the, with um, a special report on Lionel Messi. And when we come back, we'll throw our lights open for you to speak with China Cho and hear from him directly. <laughs> 